Hello, hello, Mr. Thompson here with a video math lesson. I'm going to talk about fractions, good old fractions. Um, talk a little bit about what fractions are, but mostly um, using them in operations like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Okay, first quick review. All right, fractions, what are fractions? They are um, partial quantities. Okay, so quantities just means numbers or an amount of things, right? Partial means uh, part, so not a whole. Now, of course, you can use fractions to represent a whole, but usually the the main idea with fractions is that it's a part uh, of something, sort of a sum, but not all of, of what you could have, okay? Fractions look like this, um, one number over another. The number on top is called the numerator. The number on the bottom is called the denominator. The numerator is the number of parts you have, okay? So this fraction here, it's one half, right? We have one part, okay? Just one piece, okay? Um, maybe, you know, pizza is your classic fraction um, example. So you have one piece of pizza. The denominator is the number of parts it takes to make a whole. So if you have half of a pizza, you have one piece, and two of those pieces makes an entire pizza, okay? Pretty simple, right? So that's what fractions are. Let's look at adding and subtracting fractions. The rules are quite simple. Okay, we'll look at an example. One-fifth plus two-fifths, okay? Um, the rules for adding and subtracting fractions. First, you simply add the numerators to get a new numerator. So we have um, one and two, so one plus two is three, okay, for the result, all right? The denominator just stays the same, okay? So it was a 5, the new numerator is 5. So 1 fifth plus 2 fifths is 3 fifths, okay? Um, now, that, of course, works if these two numbers are the same. If they're not, then you have problems. Um, those new denominators must be the same. We'll look at in a second at how to make them the same if they're not. But first, let's do a quick subtraction. Um, and <clears throat> adding and subtracting always pretty much work very similar, so it's the same thing, except instead of adding the numerators, you subtract them. So 4 minus 2 is 2, and of course, uh, you, this, the same thing with the denominators, they stay the same. So 4 sevenths minus 2 sevenths is something over 7, right? And of course, 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2 sevenths, okay? So adding and subtracting, very simple, if the denominator is the same. If it's not, then what you have to do is find a common denominator, Okay, so basically common means the same, so you have to basically make the denominators the same. Okay, let's look at an example, okay, um, and we'll go through the, the rules, the steps as we go. One half plus one third, okay. The first step is to find the LCM, the lowest common multiple of the denominators, and that LCM becomes the new denominator for both fractions. Okay, so this time we're not going to find the answer right away. We're going to rewrite our fractions. Okay, so here's my little fraction lines. There's going to be numbers on top and bottom. We're going to rewrite this problem into a new problem. Okay, and what we're going to do is find the lowest common multiple of these two numbers, and that will be our common denominator. Okay, so we've got 2 and 3. What's the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3? Um, that would be 6, right? Okay, so that's our new denominator. Okay, um, so that's the first step. Okay, next bit is a little bit tricky. We need to multiply each numerator, so these numerators, by the same number that each original denominator would have been multiplied by to get the new denominator. Okay, so that's a little bit wordy, lots of, that's maybe hard to understand, but what we're going to do is take this 2, for example. What would the 2 need to be multiplied by to get the 6? Okay, so 2 times what is 6? Well, that's, of course, 3. Right? 2 times 3 is 6. So if we multiply the 2 by 3 to get 6, then we need to multiply this numerator from that same fraction also by 3. So 3 times 1 is 3. Okay? Same thing happens over here. 3 times what is 6? Um, and it is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So then 1 times 2 is 2. Um, so that's our new numerator for that fraction. Okay, so now what we have here are equivalent fractions. 3 6 is the same as 1 half. And if you know how to reduce fractions, which we might talk about in a sec, um, 
then you know that 3 6 reduces to 1 half. So we haven't actually changed this problem, we just made it look a little different. Okay, but we've got a common denominator so we can make so we can get our answer now. We know that the denominator is going to be 6 and then 2 plus 3 is 5. So 1 half plus 1 third is 5 sixths. Okay, and that's the answer. Um, now, uh, for subtraction, same thing happens. I could just change this problem to a subtraction problem, and you'll notice this second step didn't change at all. Um, we still f need to find a common denominator. It's still going to be 6 because the didn't. Uh, all I did was change this to a subtraction. Okay, so s the 6s stay the same. This new denominator is going to be a s the same as well. So all we do differently is 3 minus 2 instead of 3 plus 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1, and 1 half minus 1 third is 1 sixth. Okay, so there's adding and subtracting fractions. Let's look at multiplying fractions. Okay, multiplying fractions is, is the easiest thing to do with fractions. Super easy. The first step is multiply the numerators to get a new numerator. Okay, so 2 times 4. Um, we're going to rewrite, we're, gonna, we're just basically going to get the answer. Okay, and 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, next step. Multiply the denominators to get a new denominator. 3 times 5 is 15. Guess what? We're done. <laughs> so we're moving on. Sorry if that went fast, but you can go back and rewind the video if you need to see it again. But multiplying fractions very easy. Dividing fractions, a little bit trickier, okay, but not, not too bad. There's one sort of little complication, okay? Um, to divide by a fraction, this is, the, this is the key here. To divide by a fraction multiply by its reciprocal, okay? So you may be asking, well, what is a reciprocal? Okay, so let's talk about that first. Let's look at the fraction 3 fourths, okay? Um, and let's find the reciprocal, okay? We're going to, it's the reciprocal is going to be another fraction, okay? Usually, maybe sometimes you get something that turns out the reciprocal is not a fraction or can be written as a whole number or whatever, but um, you can always write numbers as a fraction. So uh, the reciprocal of 3 fourths is going to be a fraction, and the way, the way we do it is we simply flip it, okay? We, we invert it. The bottom, the, sorry, the denominator becomes the numerator, okay? And the numerator becomes the denominator, or you might say the bottom becomes the top, top becomes the bottom. Uh, but um, so the new fraction, the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 thirds, okay? Pretty simple. Um, one way you can check, um, and this, this seems obvious, but... Um, that this is the reciprocal, but sometimes it's a little bit uh, tricky just to, to make sure. And a reciprocal of a number, you can multiply them and you always get 1. So if you multiply these fractions, 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 3, also 12. And of course, anything over itself is 1. So a reciprocal, if you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you always get 1. So that's a nice little way to check and make sure that you got the correct reciprocal. Um, as easy as it seems to find it. So let's go back to dividing fractions. Okay, and let's get an example. Okay, one half divided by one fourth. All right, so we're dividing by one fourth, and that's key. It's one half divided by one fourth. So to divide by a fraction, in this case one fourth, we're going to multiply by its reciprocal. So we're going to find the reciprocal of one fourth. So we'll rewrite this problem. Okay, the one half stays the same. And instead of dividing, we're going to multiply but we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of one-fourth, which, of course, is just going to be 4 over 1, okay? Which you may realize that that can be written as a whole number, but that's okay. It's still 4 over 1, okay? And now multiplying fractions is really easy. We do 1 uh, times 4, which is 4, and 2 times 1, which is 2, okay? Now, this 4 over 2 can actually be written. It can be simplified, right? And actually, one way to think of fractions is that it's simply 4 divided by 2, okay? 4 over 2 is 4 divided by 2, which turns out, of course, to be 2. So that's the answer. Um, and it's worth talking real quickly about simplifying fractions. Very important that if you have an answer to a problem, which is a fraction, it needs to be simplified, okay? So, for example, 6 ninths. Now, remember what this means, okay? Again, we'll look at a pizza. If you cut a pizza into 9 slices, which would be a bit weird, but you could, um, this is like saying, okay, six of them are going to be um, whatever, plain cheese. The other ones are going to be meat lovers. Who knows? 
Okay, but these shaded ones, these six, um, are you know maybe for one person, and these are for the other person. It's not very fair, but that's all right. Um, uh, a pizza with nine slices can also be divided evenly into thirds. Okay, and you'll notice that these six slices fill up exactly two of the thirds. If we break it into three parts, you could have made this a, a pizza with three pieces um, and then divided it up exactly the same. Okay, um, so what we have here, this six ninths actually is equal to two of the thirds. Okay. Um, and that's what we've done is reduced this fraction. It was six over nine. Now it's these are these are exactly the same. Six over nine equals two over three. The mathematical way to do it, if you're not a visual person looking at the pizza, doesn't help you. What you need to do is what, um, divide both um, the numerator and the, denom the denominator by the greatest common factor. So what goes into both six and nine? Um, three does. So we're going to divide them each by three. And of course, six divided by three is two and 9 divided by 3 is 3. It's kind of the opposite of when we found the common denominator. Okay, So we can um, look at reducing some more fractions. 5 twentieths, what goes into 5 and 20? Uh, 5 does. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. So 5 twentieths is 1 fourth. 12 eighteenths, what goes into both 12 and 18? Well, 2, uh, but so does 3. Um, and actually, so does 6. So 6 is the biggest. Um, so we'll divide them both by 6. And 12 divided by 6 is 2. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So 2 thirds actually was the same as this 6 ninths, right? 2 thirds. Okay? Make sure you always reduce uh, answers that are in fraction form. All right. That's all for fractions for me from now. Good luck. See you next time.